Okay, hey guys, um, we're, uh, we're finishing off our kind of a reveal conversation. We did a review on the cards. If you haven't watched those videos, um, they're out there. I did a, a, a star rating system reveal. Now we're kind of going to do some deck tech conversation. I'm going to try to keep it kind of short and concise if possible, especially because a lot of the champions, I have a couple different decks I want to talk about. Uh, I'll do my best to drag things into frame when I'm talking about them so people have an idea of what I'm referring to and what I'm saving deck slots for. But I'm going to do really, really loose, non-refined, just general idea builds that I think are going to see play because of cards. Uh, I may not go over every card, but I'm definitely going to do some, like, theory crafting for the new champions and there are a couple just new cool staples I kind of want to theory craft around uh, without further ado we're just going to hop in this will hopefully be a one video segment if I go quickly enough but if I think the video is running too long I may split it up into two parts so that it's more digestible uh, to start with we'll go ahead and look at shadow isles um, and what we'll be doing for Shadow Isles here. Um, I am not planning any builds with Viego using um, Thresh or Kindred. So really either of those can be a placeholder because Kindred kind of fills the role of like, I care about stuff dying and as a five drop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just use Kindred as a placeholder for this Viego in my deck for my thought processing um, and kind of show what I think a Viego deck is going to look like. I have a couple different ideas here. The first one I want to focus on, though, is one I think less people are considering for Viego, because uh, I think a lot of people are going like, oh, obviously Viego's get, get played with dragons, or obviously Viego's going to get played with uh, LeBlanc, because it has a lot of high attack, low health minions. And uh, I'll get into those like a little tiny bit to discuss them, but this is the deck I'm really interested in because uh, I haven't heard anyone else talk about it and I think they're actually kind of sleeping on the concept of um, what this deck can do. So I think that there actually is a place where, and remember this Kindred's a Viego, I think there is a place where what you wind up doing is you wind up running an ephemeral package. Ish. Um, and so I have two different kind of ideas for what this deck looks like, and one is a more ephemeral heavy, heavy deck that also plays Hecarim, and one is a deck that just plays value with your uh, creatures dying and doing things. We're going to start with the ephemeral package, and then we're going to go from there. Um, I, it, I also want to let the record show, I think the ephemeral package actually might be the memeier version of this package, uh, but that is a-okay. Okay. So of note, um, the Song of the Isles card, I think is going to see play with Viego in the other package that we're going to come back to. I just want you to keep in mind that I think there's actually a pretty interesting thing that you can do with this card um, that is potentially going to be uh, just game winning. I also want to note that I think it's possible to do a, a Mistwraith package in combination with Viego between Mistwraiths um, being happy to be duplicated and getting bigger and them getting bigger while Viego's in play and then dying would, um, would get you value. Uh, and then the Viego cards themselves, um, you having extra copies would be great. So a lot of the synergy cards kind of work hand in hand. I'm not going to do a deck tech for the Mistwraith version at this time. Um, because there are enough Viego decks to talk about. I think there are a lot of different ways to play Viego, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what kind of comes of it. Also, if you're wondering why uh, it doesn't seem like I have a lot of um, ephemeral support yet, uh, you'll see quite soon why. Um, so in this version of the list, you definitely want to play the Caretakers. I think you definitely want to play the Scorches, both to sustain your life and because you can... Uh, have the Mass Mothers heal you back up. Um, we'll just save a slot there rather than um, 
rather than put the card in, I think I'm going to save the slot. Uh, let the record show here, Encroaching Mist is just standing in for Despair. Um, this version of the deck, I'm going to go ahead and just say right now that we are um, we're going to play Despair at least as a one-of, and I might come back and put more in afterwards. Uh, the other version of the deck I'm thinking of, by the way, will be running the Undying instead of a bunch of um, Ephemerals. I think basically any playing, anything playing Viego is going to want the Shark Chariot specifically, though. I guess just for uh, for crafting purposes and visualization for everyone else, let's just go ahead and kind of signify what I want where so that you have a good understanding of what I'm doing build-wise. So uh, this right here, the Camavorian um, Soldier, will just be represented by this card because it's a three drop. Um, and then we're going to come down here and this Rekindler as a two of is just going to be representing the invasive hydro vine. And then I think on that note, there's a little consideration for something like the Oblivious Islander, but I just don't think it quite will fit into the deck as is. I th think what we really want to see, though, is um, Stalking Shadows. You can give us extra copies of the stuff we already have a high value in that can generate mist for us, and it does give us an elusive unit for attacking purposes, which is going to be pretty important. Um, <laughs> I think we kind of just run a um, a kind of just in case things are too aggressive package too, where we do like a couple withering whales, and uh... actually we probably actually would run the curse keeper in this deck because we have enough stuff to sacrifice it, and we want the big things that will eventually die. Anyways, probably run Black Spirit 2. <laughs> Double checking kind of how I feel about the list right now. Yeah, so I think this is kind of like the rough, the rough and cut idea I would have for specifically the ephemeral package. Um, so. The Rekindler is this Invasive Hydra where it's giving you the Encroaching Mists. I'm playing as a two of because it is a great finisher in the deck, but it is a little top heavy, um, especially where Hecarim's also a finisher. Um, playing this as a three of, it's one of our best targets for the Stalking Shadows because it's going to give us even more elusive units and make our vehicle even stronger because of summoning those Mist Wraiths. If you don't know what those do, feel free to watch my other videos where I review the cards or look up what the cards do online. Um, I'm not going to go into any of the like extra effects that are being summoned because I have already gone in depth on that both in stream and in my videos that will also be available. And then, um, like I said, the Kindred is Viego, but it's, and the, this is uh, the Viego removal spell, which is basically atrocity against your opponent, against any unit. Um, and that's kind of the idea of the list. Pretty straightforward, just like, I, I do some aggressive things, try to get to my late game, have a little bit of stuff to stabilize, and just, you know, finish with Hecarim. It's a pretty traditional Hecarim package. Um, if you've seen Hecarim decks in the past, you've probably seen something similar. So nothing too crazy there. I don't think there's anything new and exciting going on. The more new and exciting concept I have, though, is the notion of... I'm going to use that as the same placeholder, by the way. Um, or, sorry, not cutting the Kindred because the Kindred is in there for my other unit. We're playing this as a higher number this time. You'll see why soon. Uh, we're still keeping the Scourges because they're an amazing stabilizer and they give us a lot of um, 
counts on our tick. It's also very tempting to do this because it also gives us the five count. Uh, we're definitely cutting the Soul Shepherds from this build, though. Um, I think this build also cutting the Curse Keepers. The nice thing about Mask Mother is it keeps the stats in play to let you keep using them, which is why I think I want to hold the Mask Mother. Uh, it's going to combo really well with um, getting the extra Mists. But this version of the list is a little, little different. And that's where it gets getting tricky size-wise. The reason I can cut the Withering Whales is uh, you're going to see some different control cards come down actually here. I think this version of the deck has more trouble fitting the Blighted Caretaker, and it's okay to not run it in every version of the list. Uh, so anyway, this version, we're, we'll be running a nice little Frostbite package with it. And the reason for that being um, Frostbite is going to synergize with the removal spell. Remember, this is the stand-in for the uh, creature strikes you and then uh, dies. You can Frostbite your opponent's unit and then use this to remove that unit and that is going to be insanely powerful for us uh in fact now that i think about it yeah no no, no it's fine and then um i'm dying and we might we might go back and make a little bit of changes to this in a second still so like please ignore my inconsistencies on my cuts. I'm figuring it out as I build because I have a rough idea of, all, of what I want to have done here, but nothing is like set in stone. But anyways, where is it? Three, okay. So with that being the case, I think we actually do cut that at one. Copy there. And then I think we, um, I think we actually will cut, <laughs> we'll cut one of that hard removal because, uh, it does feel worse when it's not doing our full plan. Actually, no, no, no. Cause this version, this version of the list is really going to be about getting the Viego going. So, um, hold on. This version will we'll cut out the top end, and you'll see why soon. If you haven't already kind of identified why, you'll see why. Uh, my train of thought went away. I forgot what I was looking for, actually. Whoops. Um, um, oh yeah, I want a atrocity in the deck. Okay. And then uh, unit-wise, it's actually kind of okay. Unit number-wise, uh, I think this version of the deck might actually want... To play spirit leeches and change up what it's doing just a bit. Uh, because we have the Song of the Isles, I think we can um, we can decrease that a little bit. Most likely is the plan. Da -da -da. See, this is where it gets trickier, right? Because when you have more cards to cut. Cut one of those, and we'll cut. Uh, we'll cut one of the the scorches, because uh, the idea with this list. This is the kind of the idea with this list. So you have the glimpse beyonds, uh, obviously for cycling, and then uh, this is going to be able to frostbite unit and hopefully stats for your Viego. Uh, the mask mother is going to give you stats for the Viego. Could be able to save effects from things like the dark weather scourge or something. You put song of isles. The reason I'm valuing song of isles higher than Dark Warrior Scourge is not only can you um, sometimes just win a game by giving something fearsome, uh, but if we apply that effect to an Undying, we can get the Undying killed in a round. We're going to be playing a bunch of things to sacrifice our Undying um, to hopefully make that happen a little bit more frequently. Also of note, though, is if we use the Song of Isles and that Reverse Atrocity card, 
I'm 99% sure the interaction will be that the creature will actually heal us for the damage it does to us. So it will be a net zero damage. So you could potentially have a very big unit in play. Give it a Song of the Isles. Hit yourself with it. Take net zero damage and then level a Viego in the process. And um, that's kind of the idea we're going for. We could hit some awkward plays where we get too cluttered by Undying, especially because Viego cards do do extra um, summonings and that kind of thing, which is a point where you would just decide to try to sacrifice an Undying to make more space if um, you had the option that is. Um, can get kind of clunky, but this is just, well, like I said, a loose idea. It's not refined, but this is kind of a cool concept for where I could see Viego going and being pretty close to like a mono Viego deck. And notably, I couldn't fit the high end card in this version because the Undying should be a bigger threat for this version of the deck. Uh, biggest consideration is actually putting more stuff that can sacrifice Undying into this version of the list. Um, but refinings for another day. This is a very loose concept. I am in no way saying this is the best form and that is fully taken shape. A lot of considerations to be made with the list. This is just a version. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this to make it quick. Um, so really quickly, I'm gonna kind of point out other cool things that you can do with Viego, but not qu go quite as in depth into those deck ideas at this time, uh, because I really wanted to kind of keep the video as simple as possible and um, and leave uh, the more the more common approaches I've seen people talking about I kind of would like to leave those more just untouched at this time so we will go into the fact that uh, Viego Dragons I think is a very likely build where you are I'm sorry you don't actually need the mist you're running the, the camera forward and stuff uh, and the crawling viper worm, and you're playing it with um, with Shivana and just lots of value mid range cards. And Viego is just a great kind of I'm an extra threat. You want to kill all these dragons, but killing these dragons levels Viego, and then I win the game. And um, imagine a dragon deck. Add in a little bit more control cards, probably, or a little, and or a little bit more draw. Um, like I said, not going to get too into it right now. Uh, I also think that if you uh, were to take LeBlanc Sivir and just cut... Or, sorry, not LeBlanc Sivir. I guess LeBlanc Sivir still works, though. But basically, just you take a LeBlanc Sivir or a Le LeBlanc Ash deck and you cut the half of the LeBlanc cards that, um, that are from Out of Faction and then you go into this with Viego instead and you are kind of generating value off the fact that all those LeBlanc cards have very high stat lines and low health lines, and uh, their, their high risk, high reward gives you a, um, an extra reward on the risk end of things if people kill your stuff um, while you have Viego in play, and you can just generate you a ton of value. And that's kind of, you know, a more common train of thought for Viego. So I really want to highlight this cool notion of um, Viego doing a more mono I uh, Shadow Isles or like small splash Shadow Isles. I also could see like a more pure fusion with Ash and playing a little, little bit more of um, of the Frostbite cards and running the Rhyme Fang Dead Mother package. Uh, could be quite strong with Viego, and I think one of the first decks I'm gonna experiment with is probably actually gonna be an Ash Viego deck that uses both and this and just a whole lot of. Uh, stall tactics while having great champion finishers and a couple good high-end finishers that aren't champions uh and we'll see how those go uh that's all i really have to say on viego at this time um i'm not going to do a theory craft support deck because it only got a new card i'm not going to do a theory craft deck for like the ruin rex because it only got a new card so there 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 are some cool things where um you know i could Guild just like, here, let's build a deck around this one new card. Uh, but for the sake of keeping the videos more short and sweet, we're going to go ahead and just get to the next half of our conversation, which is doing a Shruma Noxious build using Akshan. And um, so Akshan really cares about being targeted. It's a two drop. Zillion's going to go ahead and represent our Akshan for us, right? And then... Um, we know that if we're playing Akshan, we basically want to play this card right here. Um, 
So we're going to go ahead and just find a 3-drop Shruma card that we don't think we would be playing otherwise in this version of the list. Perfect. Devoted Council is something we wouldn't be playing, so that's just going to represent this. So these are just kind of our staple. We are playing these because we are playing Auction. And then um, I do believe that we're going to want to play the Grappling Hook as a 3 of, and we are going to want to play um, the Absolver as a 3 of in this version of the list. So uh, this can go ahead and be our Grappling Hook because it's a 3 job, and this can be a, our... Oops, oh, I only have one copy of that, and I am not crafting. Not unworthy will go ahead and uh, be our copy of the Absolver, um, just to kind of get visuals in front of us. Uh, we know that I want to try this out with a Riven, because Riven's going to do a lot of additional targeting using uh, Reforging. And then we're going to want to play the entire Reforce package, because that is both what enables Riven and gives us extra things to target. And then we're pretty much just going to be playing other good units that do cool targeting things. Uh, and one of the, the big debates is if we make room for this card, because this card is fantastic, but it's very top end. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to look at everything else we're playing and then see if we can kind of fit in um, more stuff afterwards. I think the answer is going to be yes, though. I think that we're actually going to be in a very good position for doing that. Uh, I do know that this Ruin Reckoner is definitely making the list. Anything that wants to tar target stuff is going to be very happy to play the Ruin Reckoner. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be playing the Basilisk Rider, so that will be the holder for the Ruin Reckoner. Um, I know I don't want to play the, the weaker targeted card, so I think that's about it for those cards that say target, at least. Um, now, on that note, as Mimi as it is, I do believe there's a quite respectable r respectable targeting card of the arrow the the tracker where uh at round end since you cast a spell on it it strikes the weakest enemy the tr the trouble with this is it's a six drop and i think it being a six drop means that it will be in its own version of a targeting deck that's more controlling if that version of the deck exists and is playable it will not make this version of the list and that actually answers my question too because i was trying to refresh my memory and how much that cost i think we do make room for this bruiser so um this will be a filler for the bruiser since it's the correct faction and cost um and now we're kind of just looking at spells in the deck. And some of them are going to be very, very easy picks compared to others. Um, Shapestone is going to become an auto three of for this list because we're going to be able to give units overwhelm quite easily due to reforging and um, summoning the auction will summon a landmark. So it's just de facto going to be in the deck. Um, I think... Brother's Bond, at least the way I process how it should work mechanically, should count down twice on our landmark. So I think Brother's Bond actually becomes something we want to include in the list. Uh, I think it's going to be very important. Um, the list at this time has the weak point of not drawing us very many cards. So we do have to make a little bit of um, concessions for that. So we probably throw in the Preserviums. And then we take a look at what we're at and... Uh, we're actually not doing too poorly, but the worst thing is there are a lot of really strong Shruma units and a lot of really aggressive Noxion units that we aren't playing in this version of the deck yet, but I think this version of the deck is designed to be a more mid-range version, um, and there's an aggressive version that would cut out this four, the 4 and 5 drop, and they would play these lower cost things and more targeting cards. Uh, that do things like burn your opponent's face instead of uh, what I'm doing right here. Um, for the context of what we're currently playing, though, this is what I want to try and I'm more excited about. I think it's going to be a really interesting list. And um, I think since there's the one slot left, it's pretty justifiable to say the Soothsayer would go into that slot uh, in order to protect uh, the palace, especially the second palace that you get. Um, so that's kind of the idea for Auction here. Obviously, you can play Auction in a couple other regions. Uh, there are plenty of regions that can target their stuff relatively well. Uh, you also could play it with Draven really well, which would give you a lot more room um, for other units. I think if I were to be doing the Draven version of the, of the deck, uh, I would play the more aggressive package and a bunch of the cheaper units and 
cut out these reforged cards that are explicitly in here because of Riven. Um, and I don't necessarily think the Riven version is the best version, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. 